On today's episode, I head up a mountain for a live broadcast powered by the new Ford F-150 hybrid. Did my kidneys survive the trip? Find out right now. This episode is brought to you by the Insta360 ONE X2. It's an amazing new little camera that can add punch to any production. Get shots like this. Click the link in the video description below to get yours today. This is the 2021 Ford F-150 Hybrid 4x4 Super Crew with the 5.5 foot bed. This vehicle is loaded. It's a platinum trim with tons of upgrades, beautiful leather, four-wheel drive, and a hybrid powertrain. Prices you see it here, $72,105 US dollars, including destination and delivery. Today, I'm going to use as many features as I can as we travel up the Washington Overland Trail to the top of a mountain and attempt a live stream broadcast using the built-in Wi-Fi and ProPower system. Of course, we'll have to use four-wheel drive to even get there. But first, let's look at all the features, starting with the back. Climbing into the bed is super easy and barely an inconvenience with the retractable stair and safety handle. The bed has the optional tough bed spray and liner with a payload capacity of 2,120 pounds. If you option the traditional V8, that increases it to a maximum of 3,325 pounds, which is impressive. Our test car was equipped with the 2.4 kilowatt power system. This is standard on the hybrid model. You can option an even more powerful 7.2 kilowatt setup if you need it. Today, all we need is enough power to run a live stream travel kit, so the 2.4 setup should be just fine. No matter which pro power system you opt for, the hybrid comes with a standard 3.6 liter V6 combined with a 47 horsepower electric motor located inside the 10 speed automatic transmission. Together, they produce a whopping 430 horsepower and 570 pound feet of torque. A 1.5 kilowatt hour battery pack keeps power in reserve. The four wheel drive system features an auto four wheel drive setting, which I'll occasionally refer to as all wheel drive in this review, because that's what Ford calls it. This is an electronic shift on the fly dual range system enhanced with an electronic locking rear differential and a 3.73 final drive. Towing capacity is limited to 11,000 pounds. EPA rates this setup at 24 miles to the gallon on the highway and around town. I'm six foot one. That's where I would actually have this seat if I was driving and I got tons of room. Further, I even have fold out armrest, dual stage seat warmers, and I got DC, USB, and AC. This is a second row designed to do business. And this huge panorama sunroof really lets in a ton of light. And if I'm not carrying passengers, I can just flip this up and have lots of cargo space. Fold up the handy divider to keep smaller objects from rolling around. I don't know what it is with running boards, but I always feel like they're meant to ride on. Anyhow, moving on to the front seat, power switches it on with a push of a button. Climbing on in, we get a cabin that is I have to say befitting a $70,000 vehicle. This thing has so many top shelf materials. It's kind of stunning. The steering wheel is wrapped in leather with a really nice contrast stitching. It even has a wood inlay down here, plus a metal surround. I mean, this thing, yeah, it's really nice. The seats, super comfortable. They are wrapped in leather and they are both heated, cooled, and I get three-way memory. But further, they have massage units. Just tap over here, click seats, and I can pick a number of different massage programs, both for me and for my passenger. If you have short legs, you can adjust the pedals with a button right here. The gauge cluster has been replaced with a digital screen and it has a lot of just really useful information. I really like how clear they've made it. We also have a lot of customization options. We can go from trip to truck info. Let's go ahead and select that. 
information. I can look at tire pressure, seat belt, engine information, power distribution. There's even an off-road mode, which moves everything else out of the way and gives me just tons of useful off-road data. This setup will modify the four-wheel drive system to best be optimized for whatever kind of condition I want. We can pick Sport, which is of course the most aggressive setup. There's also Eco, which will try to get the most MPGs. And then there's Towing, which optimizes for low-end torque. We also have a normal mode, of course. We also have Slippery, which works to improve traction in conditions like rain and snow. And then there's also Deep Snow and Sand, which allows for additional wheel spin and pushes a lot more power to the back so that you can force your way through trickier situations. And then finally, there is Mud and Ruts, which keeps the most amount of power, locks the rear differential, and really just makes this thing a brute off-road. The best thing about having different drive modes to set up your four-wheel drive system is a lot of people just don't really understand when to go into rear-wheel drive, when to do four high, four low, four auto. It's a mystery to a lot of owners. This basically just allows you to hit a dial to match the conditions and the vehicle will sort it out for you. It's really, I think, just a really nice thing to have. More dials up above to help with trailering because this, of course, will tow just an insane amount of stuff. Before I go into more stuff here, let's just appreciate this interior. The materials are just gorgeous. Everything about this interior just looks so nice and well put together. But it's not just about looks, it's also very practical. Um, you know, one of the problems with trucks is you have the gear selector here and you have this hump here and you try to like put your computer here and your lunch here or something when you're trying to get work done in the middle of the day. Well. Ford has fixed that problem by adding that feature. It goes flush and then I fold this down and I have a completely flat table to eat lunch on or work from. It's really just such a nicely thought out interior. It's designed for people who drive trucks and, you know, really need to work in it every day. The main display here is running SYNC 4. It supports, of course, Bluetooth audio streaming, XM satellite radio, integration of mobile devices through Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I can plug them in, set it up, and then I can switch it over to wireless because it supports them wirelessly as well with a charging pad right down there. We already have CarPlay configured on this one, so I can click over to that and I can either use CarPlay maps or I can go to the next thing over and use the built-in maps. On to navigation, let's do a quick audio search. Single push is built-in voice command. Hold is Apple CarPlay. Find the nearest Cafe Ladro. Which item would you like? Find the nearest Starbucks. Which item would you like? Built-in Verbal commands don't seem to do very well with independent businesses. They seem to always want to go to the chain stores. Not a fan. However, I could just jump over to CarPlay and do CarPlay. Find the nearest Cafe Ladro. The closest one I found is Cafe Ladro on Urban Plaza. No problem. So there are options, which is good. Under apps, it does have the Waze app. If you really like Waze, it's built in to Sync 4. Here you can set up the vehicle everything from how long you want it to idle for, whether you want occupant alerts, uh, how the alarm system responds, how the power tailgate works. You can do the vehicle hotspot here. If you have a crew working and you need a single hotspot, you can set up the vehicle for that. Here you can configure all of the active safety stuff from cruise control, which is adaptive, uh, to the speed limit assist, lane keep assist, pre-collision systems, rear view camera, blind spot ID, parking aids, cross traffic alerts, reverse brake assist, and driver alerts. Uh, that prevents you from, you know, if you're swerving, it'll remind you to pull over. But this vehicle is also equipped with Pro Power. So Pro Power basically makes this F-150 act like a portable generator, which is amazing. As we saw in Texas, when there was that massive power outage, some people were using their brand new F-150 hybrids to power their houses, uh, because literally this can do that. Um, the model we have right here is configured with the 2,400 watt pro power system, and I can switch it into generator mode, which means that it will not shut off the vehicle. It'll let the vehicle keep the generator going, even if I lock it and walk away. So that is very cool. 
And then Sync 4 also gives you an extra panel on the side here, which you can configure with a number of options from zone lighting to eco behavior. Basically, it's all the stuff that's in the main menu, but it gives you a kind of smaller version of on the right, so you can always have it up. A lot of these features are also accessible through quick keys up on top here, where you can switch your cameras, which this does have a gorgeous satellite view as well as a backup camera with that auto braking feature. And then it also has auto parking, which I never use. They call it Active Park Assist. I had a bad experience with it a few years ago, never touched it since. And I can also access the Pro Power system with a push of a button up here as well. Lots of really great configuration options, a lot of just fantastic features throughout this whole vehicle. So what are we going to do today? Now this is a huge vehicle. The F-150 is not small by any measure. So we're not going to take it onto a small twisty forest road. No, instead we have a mission today. I am supposed to be on the top of a mountain to do a live webcast using not just my phone, but an actual proper live video streaming switching system. Those systems don't just need power, they also need Wi-Fi. So I'm going to use this vehicle as a mobile production rig. And we're going to see, A, can we get to this location, which is on the top of the Washington Overlanding Trail just outside Ellensburg. We've been there before with other vehicles. This is definitely the biggest thing we will have taken up there. And then also, how well does the broadcast work? We're going to broadcast to our second channel on YouTube, Driving Sports Live. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys watched it. If you watched it on Driving Sports Live, you know we were successful. So I guess you could say spoiler alert. But still, I think getting there is most of the fun. So let's buckle up and head on out. Let's try out this intelligent cruise control. Uh, to enable it, all I do is turn it on and set my speed. Boom, right there. At this point, it is taking over steering. It's also managing the space between me and the vehicle in front of me. And it's doing a great job really keeping the vehicle centered. And that's really important on a vehicle this big. If you're waving back and forth, people are gonna be freaked out. And then let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and put my blinker on. Yeah, and then there's no resistance in the wheel while the blinker's on because it knows I wanna make the transition. And now I'm back centered in the lane and I can take my hands off. Now you're not supposed to take your hands off. I'm just doing this to show you how the vehicle is actually steering for me. And this is of course just a system to make long distances more comfortable. It's not a fully autonomous system. And I'm gonna keep saying that until we have one that is. And hey, Tesla people, don't you be saying you have a fully autonomous system, because you don't. Yeah, on the freeway here, it's super quiet, very comfortable. I have the seat massager and heat units going, so I am ready for a long trip. But before we go the 100 miles to Ellensburg, let's pull off and try out a couple other things with this vehicle. Specifically, I want to see just how quick it is on 0 to 60. Go ahead and stop right here. This is a level surface. Let's put the drive mode into sport, even though I don't think it'll do much of a difference because wide open throttle, it's always basically the same anyway. I have it in four auto, just in case we need a little bit of four wheel drive action. I don't think we do. Three, two, one, and go. Little start and whoa, hello. Yeah. 65.82 seconds. That should be quick enough for anybody. Okay, on we go. Now let's head 100 miles into Ellensburg. I'm gonna go ahead and reset my average fuel MPGs here. Uh, the car's Odo, just in case we wanna track anything, says 4,311.7. And let's see what kind of MPGs the computer says we're getting on this journey. We'll check back in 
just a little bit. Okay, what just happened here? Oh! The adaptive cruise control is speed sign sensitive. We just changed from a 70 mile per hour zone to a 65 mile per hour zone. And even though I had my cruise control set for 73, it dropped it to 65 as soon as we hit that window. I'm not sure I love that. Now, the first time I saw that was in a production car, was in the Hyundai Palisade, which we just reviewed recently. It is, of course, possible to turn off the speed limit signs. Uh, in, in the recognition system here, you can enable to disable that. But uh, wow, that really caught me off guard. Oh, and uh, right now I'm on the peak of uh, Snoqualmie Pass. That's one of the big peaks right there. And uh, what's my MPGs? 13.5. Oof, not real good. But of course, it is a steep climb. This really doesn't count until we get up and back down the mountain. After going up over the pass and back down again, we're looking at just over 20 MPGs. And I have a couple thoughts about just the overall driving experience. First off, it's very quiet and comfortable. It is a little bouncy from the wagon suspension in the back, but that is what you get with a truck. The transmission did stay in 10th gear almost the entire time. It really didn't put a lot of effort in and climbing because of course it has so much horsepower and torque. It just wasn't a big deal for it. The adaptive cruise control worked pretty good. However, when going into the sun in certain bright, contrasty situations, it would shut down. Not unusual though, Subaru system does the same. If you have a really bright light source like the sun with a lot of glare, then you are going to lose eyesight or in this case, Ford system, you'll lose the Ford system. However, once you know a cloud moves out or you turn your position slightly, the system kicks back on. So it's not really a big deal. I'd say for road trips, this is a fun vehicle. It's really great, super comfortable. I'm getting a really great massage. The massage units in this are the good ones. They cover both the back and the butt. They're not just like a little tap, tap, tap. These ones really get in there and I really appreciate that. Now let's head on for the real challenge, getting to the top of a mountain in time for a live broadcast, which is scheduled for two o'clock, which it's currently, yeah, uh, we don't have a lot of time. The road we're on today is an old wagon trail built in the 1800s. Today, it's a wilderness road with several trailheads along the way. Trails sometimes are a little narrow for something like this. Also, the rear suspension in this is not that far removed from the old wagons that used to travel down this road a century ago. Because of course they haven't moved to independent rears on these things yet. The road today is going to be really rough, but there's not gonna be any like rock crawling. This isn't a technical trail. It is just a very rough one. So really what we're testing here is the all wheel drive system, how well it responds to tricky situations in a few spots, and also the ground clearance. This does have nine and a half inches of ground clearance, which should be plenty for the road today. But we gotta keep our eyes open because sometimes boulders do roll into the road. As I set up for the next leg, let me tell you a little bit about a camera I've been using for social media videos and shots from it have even been included in some of our videos from the past couple months. There are a few shots that kind of look like they're from a drone. I'm actually using the Insta360 One X2. And yeah, this is a sponsored message. This is a 360 camera. You can reframe it into a 16 by nine so it meshes with the rest of your footage. I can shoot it now and then decide later what angle I wanna use. It's really quite cool. And their app makes it super easy to edit. I've owned several Insta One Xs. The new One X2 fixes everything that I didn't like with the original X. First off, this one's waterproof. Also, they now have lens covers so I don't have to be super dainty with the lenses. I thought the extension rod would be cool, but this thing's like carbon fiber, man, and it goes 20 feet. It doesn't matter which direction it's pointing in. It's recording everything anyway. So all I have to do is basically extend the rod and start driving and try not to fall off the cliff. And then with a shot like this, I can show you just how precarious this cliff is that we're driving next to. And then I can make it look like it's a drone flying over the vehicle. 
Of course, a wide assortment of mounts are available, including suctions, poles, and even this really cool cage, which opens up even more mounting options. So with the Insta One X2, you can get just some remarkable shots unlike any other camera. So even if you already own a GoPro, or even if you already own a drone, this is one more thing to add to your kit. I'm gonna put a link in the description so you can get one of your own. Um, I've found it really awesome, and I think you will too. I can't believe they used to take stagecoaches up this road, and there used to be turnstiles here and here so that it would rotate the vehicles because the stagecoach and teams were too big for these switchbacks. I, that just, that's just insane. Well, let's continue on with our journey. The weather was dry and the road was rough, but so far it's been pretty easy going. However, I do expect that this next segment will be more challenging. Like most of the reviews, we're going to basically escalate the all-wheel drive system's capabilities as we need them. So right now, I'm not even in all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. I am in two-wheel drive, which is powering just the rear wheels. If and when I need to switch it up, I will. There is something I should do. We're getting around some pretty big boulders. So I'm going to stop for just a brief moment. Features, power running boards. I don't want the running boards to deploy when I'm over rocks. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate them. Now the tires on this are all season radials. They are not ideal for the situation. However, we do thankfully have a full size spare under the bed, which I can pop off if we need it, because these rocks are kind of on the sharp side. Although we haven't had a flat yet on this road. Knock on simulated wood. Actually, I don't know, is that simulated or real? Looks good enough to be real. Okay, here's a cross cut. This is a, going to pose a little bit of a challenge for at least two wheel drive mode. So let's see if we need to switch it up. Okay, we're just in two wheel drive mode. And this is the first cross cut. Basically, it's gonna remove traction from that wheel and that wheel. And we should see some struggling here. Oh, thanks to articulation, no struggle at all. I guess soldier on in two-wheel drive mode then. <laughs> So far, we haven't seen much to really challenge this four-wheel drive system. In fact, we're just in two-wheel drive still. However, I think this trench is gonna do it. So I'm gonna straddle it right over the middle to get to the deepest section before I cut over it, which will completely remove traction off of uh, the front left wheel and the rear right. And hopefully I don't high center through this whole process. So now I'm gonna cut over slightly just realize if I high center this I'm not sure how I'm gonna get out I'm trying to feel okay absolutely no traction so I'm gonna switch it into four auto and now let's take a look to see how that changes the reaction of the four-wheel drive system See if we even need to get, oh, power immediately. Oh, watch that back wheel. <laughs> Don't want to scrape. Easy. And I haven't even had to switch modes yet. I'm still just in normal driving mode. The trail did get rougher the higher I went, but between the gobs of power, the automatic four wheel drive, and the 9.4 inches of ground clearance, the F-150 managed it all without breaking a sweat. It wasn't the most pleasant due to solid rear axles and turn of the century suspension, but it certainly was capable. And here we are on the final climb. Antennas are right ahead. Looks like I have time to have some quick lunch before setting up for the live stream. Today's challenge wasn't really that challenging. I didn't have to go into any of the other drive modes, but as I've seen with other Ford vehicles, specifically the Bronco Sport, those drive modes they may not be really necessary because it really seems like Ford vehicles have fast enough computers and smart enough electronics 
to be able to sort power out when necessary, so long as you are in a four auto style um, all wheel drive setup or four wheel drive setup. And in this one, it did really a really good job. The 10 speed automatic was unobtrusive, didn't even really notice it, which is kind of what you want in a transmission. Power was there when I wanted it and it would bring the RPMs down when I was cruising. Yeah, overall, fantastic truck. Am I gonna spend 70 grand on it? Heck no, I do not buy 70 grand trucks. But for those of you who really like live in your truck and really need something a little more than a basic truck, this is a great option. Now I have one more thing to test here and that is the power system. I brought with me uh, my live stream travel pack. Uh, basically it is a Blackmagic TV studio with multiple monitors all packed into a box. I'm gonna hook that up to the power system here and use the Wi-Fi to do a live broadcast to the Driving Sports Live YouTube channel. That is our second channel, which only features live and more spontaneous footage. So let's go ahead and pull up, have a quick lunch, and let's get set up for this live stream. Our live broadcast travel pack doesn't take a lot of power, but it is enough of a drain that the AC power system on my 2021 4Runner can't run it. This system contains a camera switcher, dual monitors, and a computer all hooked into a single power splitter with a backup battery. The cameras are of course self-powered. And we're live in three, two, Welcome to Driving Sports Live. This is our new secondary YouTube channel where we will take you who knows where. This is a Ford F-150. With a strong wireless signal thanks to towers just feet away, the broadcast went off without a hitch and we even started a little bit early. The power draw was low enough that it didn't even register on the Pro Power system. I could have certainly brought a lot more with me, maybe lights next time. But with the broadcast done, it was time to pack up and head back down the mountain with some final thoughts about this F-150 hybrid. Now we didn't really dive into the four wheel drive stuff on this rig. And the reason for that is a standard F-150 really isn't an off-roader per se. However, it handled everything that we could throw at it today. And what we did today is about all that a work truck is ever gonna be asked to accomplish. Did the F-150 do fine? Yes, it did. However, if you really want like off-road, aggressive, just amazing everything, you really need to look to the Raptor. The F-150 Raptor is designed for that. It doesn't beat you up on roads like this, and it's just a better choice. However, if you need a work truck, if you want the nicest truck that you probably could buy, the F-150 is probably it. At least this F-150 Platinum Hybrid is, because man, that AC power, that will get people to change their minds about hybrids and pickups. Also, don't forget to check out the Insta360 ONE X2 camera linked in the description below. It's an amazing bit of tech that makes getting unique shots fun and easy. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthy. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like our videos, share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here next week.